Nothing beats that feeling of nostalgia when you're about to pop in a game you remember loving as a kid. But what about those times when you start playing said game only to find out it's aged like cat turned infested goat milk? You got eggnog in my goat milk! Well today I'm counting down my top 10 great JRPGs that age poorly. If you enjoyed Dragon Quest or JRPG content, please remember to help the channel out by giving me a like, subscribing, and turning notifications to all so you won't miss the next videos. My goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and it's only possible with your help. Thank you so much for your love and support, now let's begin. Number 10 This one hurts, but it's not like it's unplayable. Pokemon Red and Blue is a ton of people's introduction to JRPGs, and it really was up to the task back when it originally came out. Still a great game today, Pokemon Red and Blue mainly suffers from limited space, causing a ton of frustrating old school inventory management. Limited inventory space was an issue in pretty much all JRPGs from this era, but Pokemon Red and Blue exacerbates this issue because all your Pokemon have to get stored in boxes in a PC that's only located in towns. So anytime you want to move Pokemon around, you're in for a super tedious experience. You're constantly having to go back to town, change PCs, change boxes, and swap Pokemon in and out of your party in order to swap them into different boxes. Because this game still more or less holds up, but has a crazy amount of unnecessary inventory management, it made it here at number 10 on the list. Number 9 My buddy Krim's gonna hate me for this one, but the Mega Man Battle Network games have aged horribly in my opinion. Walking in literal Toucan Sam cereal box mazes while doing endless fetch quests may have been acceptable back when these games came out, but now, I can hardly get through any of the Battle Network games. I really enjoy the story and combat in these games, but the gameplay cycle is so damn boring, and it just drags out forever. Mega Man, I love you, but the Battle Network games just do not hold up anymore. Number 8 I'm gonna get flack for this one, but Legend of Dragoon has kinda aged badly. The additions used in combat needlessly drag the battles out, and using items as magic is just fucking weird, dude. I still love the story and many of the characters, but the pacing in the game is god awful. And if you suck at mid to high level additions, then you're stuck doing low damage and constantly hearing Dark complain about his recent bout of diarrhea. Burning rush. Number 7 White Knight Chronicles is a game I loved on the PS3. My friends and I would get together almost every night and play the online portion of the game and be overleveled as fuck when we'd get back to the main story. There was so much to do, and it was an absolute blast. Unfortunately, now the servers are all gone, and there's no way to experience the best this game had to offer. Now all you've got is a decent story, and a combat system that's basically Legend of Dragoon's additions, but slowed down to a crawl. It's hard for me to even see this game in such a state, which is why it's here at number 7 on the list. Number 6 Here's a classic that everyone loves for some reason. Secret of Mana was everyone's favorite Super NES game until they went back and played it in the remaster or collection of Mana. Then everyone realized the combat was a clunky and tedious mess. About half your attacks miss, and in order to do any amount of significant damage, you've got to wait for your attacks to charge up. This on top of the ring menu pausing the game anytime you want to use magic or items just made the combat so frustrating. The story wasn't much to write home about either. Thanks to the turbo hack, however, the game can be sped up, removing all the missed attacks and the need to wait between them, making it the fun adventure we all thought it was as kids. Toss in the fact that it's 3 player co-op and you've actually got yourself a pretty fun time. But without hacks, rip romhacking.net. Secret of Mana is a complete mess to play through. Number 5 The Breath of Fire series as a whole is pretty overrated if you ask me. I remember loving Breath of Fire 2 as a kid, but it's the original Breath of Fire that made this list. From having a terrible translation to the most basic bitch story, this game has nothing worth coming back to. The item and spell names had to be shortened to like, four letters, so you never really know what anything is or what it does, which is far worse than most NES era JRPGs. And the ending of the game just drags on forever, having you leave what you had assumed was the final dungeon, only to do a bunch of fetch quests in order to get to the real final dungeon. And the story never pays off. 
for having less quality in multiple ways than an NES JRPG whilst being on the Super NES, Breath of Fire 1 landed at 5th on the list. Number 4 I'm not sure if it's just nostalgia or the game's interesting art style, but people still seem to praise Vagrant Story the Odd Time, and I just don't get it. The graphical style, while cool back when it originally released, hasn't aged well at all. Looking somehow both blocky and like a series of jagged ass blurry lines, this gothic themed JRPG just doesn't hit on any level. The combat is like if you took Parasite Eve's combat and made it, well, suck, and the stages and areas are just so compact and dreary that every place looks the same. For all these reasons and more, I feel like Vagrant Story on the PS1 has aged terribly. Number 3 Not only am I going to get flack for this one from the classic Digimon fanbase, but I also was upset when I myself came to terms with the fact that the PS1 Digimon World games, well, just kind of sucked. I've never liked the original Digimon World, which I feel is one of those games I either loved or hated. I always found the monster raising aspects of it a little bizarre if not boring, and the combat was dull as heck. Digimon World 2 was my jam back in the day however. This one was a straight up dungeon crawler where you could upgrade your vehicles, disarm traps, battle, and recruit Digimon. And it actually had a pretty damn good story as well. But unfortunately the fact that you had to DNA Digivolve your Digimon in order to reset them back to level 1 and up your level cap, that really brings this game down. It made things way too unnecessarily grindy. Digimon World 3 was the one that I remembered absolutely loving as a kid, but after replaying it a couple years ago, I can strongly say it also aged like crap. There was so much unnecessary backtracking in this game, it ruined my entire experience and honestly my childhood memories with the game as well. For all these reasons, I reluctantly put the Digimon World series here at number 3. Number 2 Now I loved Dark Cloud when it first came out on the PS2, but I don't think anyone could deny how terribly this one's aged. Essentially a dungeon crawler with a great story and community building elements, it's its main dungeon crawling gameplay that has aged like milk in the Saharan sun. The controls are fairly stiff, which is almost excusable, but the combat is very tedious and every weapon has a damage meter that you need to keep your eye on at all times, lest you be stuck in the middle of a dungeon without any good weapons. It was kinda cool because it encourages you to give a try to all the different varieties of weapons available to you, but overall, the clunky combat and extremely brittle weapons are what sets this game back so much after all these years. Since the battles in dungeon crawling is what makes up the vast majority of the game, I had to put this bad boy back here in the number 2 spot on the list. Number 1 and number one is a game that was praised by so many people that I had to go back and play it for myself. Unfortunately, Phantasy Star 2 ended up being possibly the second worst JRPG I had ever played. After playing and absolutely loving Phantasy Star 1 within the past year or so, I knew I needed to check out more of the classic Phantasy Star series. So the next obvious step was to play its sequel that was hyped up by many people in my chat during my playthrough of the first game. Little did I know, Phantasy Star 2 was a horrendous, unbalanced nightmare with the worst designed dungeon maps I've experienced since the original mother on the Famicom. People will tell you things like, it's actually really good Good, as long as you use maps for the dungeons. Look at this fucking map. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have the damn map right in front of you or not. This shit would give Toucan Sam and his bullshit cereal box mazes an aneurysm. Ain't nobody solving this shit. The god awful dungeons aren't even the only problem this game suffers from. I genuinely love grinding in JRPGs, but the grind required in Phantasy Star 2 is a whole different beast. I spent 4 hours playing this bitch, and still wasn't able to get through the first or second dungeon. Hell, I couldn't even find where I was supposed to be going. I've never played a game where the initial dungeons took 7-10 to 10 attempts just to get a little bit further into before bailing out or dying and losing all my progress. Phantasy Star 1 and 4 were top tier games, and Phantasy Star 3 was uh, alright, it was kinda mid, but okay. But Phantasy Star 2 is easily the worst aged JRPG of all time. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help me reach my 5,000 subscriber goal by giving me a like, subscribing, and turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. Also, feel free to share this around to anyone you think might also enjoy it. If you want to come hang out live, you can catch me live about 3 nights per week right here on YouTube or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 3 
Thanks again for watching, have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.